Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event, which we cover um, anything that may be of interest to librarians across the state and across the country. Um, any activities, topics, whatever that may be um, useful to librarians. Uh, we do these shows every Wednesday morning live at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, they last for about an hour, give or take, uh, but they are all recorded, so you can, if you can uh, attend, um, join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always go onto our Encompass Live website and watch any of our recordings that we have for all of our shows. And we do a mixture of things here, presentations, book reviews, training sessions, anything that we can come up with, as I said. And we do have um, sessions presented by commission staff, of course, but also we bring in guest speakers, as we have this morning. Uh, today, we are going to learn about um, health information that you can use, um, online resources that you can use in your community to help your patrons. And we have... Um, Marty McGee, uh, the coordinator, the Nebraska coordinator for the National Network Libraries of Medicine, and Terry Hartman from the McGugan Library of Medicine at University of Nebraska Medical Center. Um, and they're both joining us remotely from up in Omaha. Hello, Marty Hi. and Terry. Hi. <laughs> um, so um, I think we're all set to go. I will just hand over to you and go and uh, take it away. You are set to go. Okay. Great. Thank you, Krista. Uh, well, as Krista mentioned, um, my name is Marty McGee, and I'm the Nebraska representative of the National Library of Medicine, so I'm going to do the first part of this presentation, and then I'll be turning it over to Terry Hartman, who represents the McGugan Library, where I am based, here at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. And uh, we have been uh, transversing the state, doing multiple presentations at many of the uh, public libraries in the state that have been part of the VTOP program, the broadband program. Uh, so perhaps some of you may have benefited from that, but this is the same presentation. So we wanted to share that in another venue so that people who did not elect to have trainings at their libraries would have another way of accessing this information. So here we go. The National Library of Medicine, this is just a little picture of it, and it is the world's largest medical library. It's on the campus of the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. I've been there a couple of times, but it's a really interesting place and has been a part of um, the national government as information services for more than 175 years. So we've been in business a long time, and we hope we're giving you all the right information. So let me uh, progress with our screen here. Hmm, not, there we go. Um, you know, some people say, well, why does the government do this? Or why should we be listening to this information? And I just wanted to include something that I had run across not all that long ago. You can see this is dated August 3rd, and it's talking about how people go to Google, which is a, a natural tendency because it's easy to use. But I want to tell you why you shouldn't just be going to Google, because uh, not all the information there is going to be correct. So according to this study, almost half of the websites that came up on a Google search when people were looking for um, infant sleep safety uh, provided uh, inaccurate uh, information. And of that, 28% of the search results provided those, that inaccurate information, and about the same number had nothing to do with infant sleep safety. So my uh, job, really, is to promote this, these databases that come from the National Library of Medicine, and we'll point you in the right direction for what's most current and uh, what's most evidence-based in the world of medicine. So here's the home page of Medline Plus, which I hope all of you are using and have bookmarked from your site. Uh, it's a very robust site, has loads of information. It's in, uh, and I'll talk about these things here that are listed on the right. But um, I also want you to pay attention from this home screen. And I don't know if you can see my cursor. Can you? Krista? Uh, yes, we can. Yep, we see. Just, yep, we can see if when you okay, when you're highlighting I'm things. Yep. Right now, so the three major parts of this page are the health topics, the drugs and supplements, and the videos and cool tools. And I'll be talking about those, but we're basically going to take a little tour here of the website. And uh, 
and again, I remind you all, if you ever need more information, you can contact me too. So here's the home page, but one of the things I particularly want to point out for librarians is this About Medline Plus page. And what that does is take it to uh, additional training materials. So let me click here, and we get to that next page. So this is the About Medline Plus page. But there are a couple of really useful things here for you. If you do not, if you have a library website and you want to add a little Medline Plus uh, logo to your site, or if you just want to add it as a link, you can click on this link that says adding Medline Plus to your website, or you can give that information to your uh, webmaster, and it has the coding there that you can add this easily. And we want you to share this information, so we encourage you to do that. The other thing I want to point out is at the bottom here where it says training materials, if you click on that page, you should get to this page. Um, and on here, you can see where it says information for librarians and trainers. So the things that are included on this page are brochures in English and Spanish. And actually, if you look where I have my cursor right now, here's the Medline Plus brochure in English. And I'll show you that in just a minute. And then right next to it, it's available in Spanish as well. So if you have uh, people in that population, you have some resources for them. We also have tutorials. So if you look up here where it says Medline Plus Tour, you can take a little uh, quick tutorial. So if you didn't actually want to present a class like I'm doing to you, you could use this as part of your training. And again, that's available in English and Spanish. Another nice feature of these uh, information for librarians as trainers is a new tutorial called, uh, new and that's like within the last couple of years here, called Understanding Medical Words. And if you had scrolled down on that page, you would get to this, which is the tutorial. And one of the reasons I like this tutorial is that it breaks down words, obviously, but that it has an audio component. So now you can hear the correct pronunciation of these words. And I know I've shown this to people who are in uh, the beginning stages of their health careers, and this is a real benefit for them too. Or if you're working with a community college, uh, or even in a high school where they're having uh, kids explore different careers, this is a nice resource. And this is what the Medline Plus brochure looks like. Um, I often uh, hand this out at exhibits because it's something anybody can print out from their own uh, library. I've given you here the URL, but the URL is also listed where I have this red arrow pointing. So if you happen to print out the brochure and you want to print more of them, you can just go to this website and print as many as you like. Obviously, this is not uh, copyrighted information. We want to be able to share this information. So uh, this is an easy way for us to do that. Now, um, I want to remind people that Medline Plus is available in, different, uh, in Spanish, but we also do have some other language materials. So in this screen, I'm showing you what it looks like on the English as the back side here. And if you look in this upper um, part of the screen where I'm circling Espanol, if you click on that Espanol button, then you'll get to a screen where essentially the same screen is available in Spanish. So about 95% of this whole website is available in Spanish. So because we keep it in the same, you know, it looks the same except that it has orange tabs instead of green tabs, you should be able to direct people to information that they may need. Now the other thing I want to point out on the English screen here is that we have something here called multiple languages. Now we don't have all languages in all things, uh, but we are starting to collect that information. So if you go to that page, this is what it looks like. So it's the health information in multiple languages, and you can begin to see just how many languages there are here. Uh, we couldn't possibly collect everything in every language, but we at least have a place now to begin to collect that information. Okay, now I'm going to focus on the three big tabs, which I pointed out in the beginning here, which are health topics, drugs and supplements, and videos and cool tools. So right now I'm going to look here at health topics. 
there are really a couple of different ways to search Medline Plus. You can either go through the health topics or you can search it in the search box. If you go through the health topics, you'll see that you can search either by the body location, the disorders and conditions, the diagnosis and therapy, or by demographic groups, or by health and wellness. So know that there are about 900 different health topics. Um, so it's really got a lot of information here and a lot of different ways to get to it. So on this health topics page, this would be like a typical page. If I had gone into the search box and I had put in heart disease, what it's going to do is give you a description. It's got a nice little picture here to the right. And then underneath that, you're going to see a list of uh, different links that you can search. Now, the first one here says heart diseases, and it says National Library of Medicine. And we'll look at what that page looks like. But you may find other URL links from other, um, from other parts of the list here. So for example, if we were looking at diabetes, you might also see a reference for the American Diabetes Association. So anything that we have put here as links, and I say we being medical librarians of the National Library of Medicine, who review this on a, a daily basis and add more links, are looking at reliable resources. So we're not always recreating information, but we're linking you to information outside of our own site. The other thing I want to point out is over here on the left-hand side, you'll see where it says refined by type and refined by keyword. Each one of these major headings has a number after it, and that means the number of references uh, about that particular topic. So if you looked at health topics, it has the number 165 next to it. That means there are 165 references in all the health topic information. Or if you went to drugs and supplements, there's more than 619. And uh, here's what the page then looks like from the National Library of Medicine. It starts out with the URL. It gives you a description of what it's also called. It gives you some other um, information where you can start to look, up, look at things and good overview information, too. Now, the second tab here is the Drugs and Supplements tab. And this is divided into two parts. So you have drugs on the upper part here, and you have herbs and supplements on the second part. So the drugs, you can either browse it by a generic name or a bright by a brand name. So I'm going to start with the drugs here, and this one is Atorvastatin, which is the generic name for Lipitor. Lipitor is one of the most prescribed medications uh, around because it is prescribed for high cholesterol. But if you wanted to find out more information on this, you can say, why is this medication prescribed? Uh, how should the medicine be used? What are other uses? What kind of precautions should I use? Uh, what other brand names might it have? What do you do if you take an overdose? Or what if you miss a dose? What kinds of things do you do? So this information is all provided in relatively easy to read information. And this comes from the same source that pharmacists use, which is called Micromedics. Um, you know, when we were doing these BTOP presentations, I had a question um, that someone had said, well, what about a PDR? Many of you might be familiar with that, which stands for the Physician's Desk Reference, which is not a bad source, but it's not really your best source, because the Physician's Desk Reference is really um, all the drug companies send in their information about the drugs that they manufacture. So it is going to be biased toward that manufacturer, because obviously they want to provide the best light for their particular drug. Um, this information is not biased. So it's looking at you know, all sides of it to tell you what's, what's good and, and what may be things that you need to look out for. So we hope it is a um, great resource for you to find. OK, going to the next screen here, videos and cool tools. You'll see there are three big parts here, the interactive tutorials, anatomy videos, and surgery videos. So I'm going to show you what a screen looks like first from interactive tutorials. These are like uh, little slideshows, if you will. And they're not 
uh, they're just drawings. They're not actual pictures of things. So this one happens to be on smoking. You can see these blue bars here to the left. Each one of those is just like a little chapter, if you will. So it may include a few slides. It may have a question at the end of the chapter, if you will, just to test for your understanding. But if you don't get a question right, it's okay. It just tells you whether you have it right or not. So the nice part about this also is that I like the fact that it has audio. You can listen to this, so this is good for people who may not um, uh, be good readers or people who have English as a second language so that they can listen to them. And many of these are also available in Spanish. So you can just go to that interactive tutorial site and um, click on the Spanish site and see what's available there as well. Um, another piece of this is the calculators and quizzes. Um, so here you can just get an, exam an example of some of the calculators and quizzes here, an alcohol calorie calculator or uh, calculating your body mass index, for example. There's also a game section here, so if you're looking to provide some extra stimulus to your children that have some health benefits, you can direct them to this game section too. Um, this NIH Senior Health is um, directed towards seniors, so this has senior topics, uh, but the special characteristics of this particular website are that you can resize the text so you can make it from small to larger to larger. You can actually get it very large. And you can also change the contrast. So if you have someone who has macular degeneration, they can uh, change that contrast. So instead of having a white background, then you've got a black background on which to look at things. Uh, we have not overlooked the fact that many people get their information on a phone, a smartphone. So now there's also a mobile website, and the only difference in this is that it would have an M before it. So it would be m.medlineplus.gov. And you can see that this is kind of an abbreviated format for Medline Plus, but obviously you couldn't fit everything that we had on our regular web page on the size of a, a small smartphone. So this is an alternative. We're told by uh, probably, I don't know, just a few more years. I think it's maybe by 2016 that 97% of people will be getting their information through a smartphone. So this is one of the reasons we pursue this as well. Um, I want to remind you, if you're not already receiving the Medline Plus magazine, that you can subscribe to this. Um, you would just fill in a little form like this for your library, and then they'll send you a copy of this. It comes out quarterly. It usually features a um, celebrity. In this case, it's Cloris Leachman. Um, and, you know, it's just a nice, nice thing to have in your library to provide some information on uh, things that are of current interest. Um, another thing I like to share is the My Family Health portrait. This comes actually from the Surgeon General's office, and it's a way for you to create your health history, which is becoming more important when you go into the doctor's office and they say, well, did your mom have this or that or what did your dad die of or so on and so forth. Um, you can provide that portrait by going online here, and you have two ways to do that. You can either print off a copy and just fill it out that way, or you can create a copy that you store uh, in the cloud, if you will. And so what that means is I can start an account, and then if I want to give the information to get into that account to my cousin who lives in Philadelphia, they can fill out some additional information that they may have on our family that maybe I don't have, so that we can get a more complete picture of things. So this is a nice way uh, to be able to put that together. I always find it interesting that this is recommended as a good Thanksgiving activity, which some people laugh about, but you know, people aren't opening gifts and things, so at least it's some way to concentrate that effort when you've got family or around. Uh, this just happened to be a family health portrait that I printed off a couple of years ago. You can see the date here is 2009. This happens to be the Kennedys, so you most of us are familiar with um, the Kennedy family, but I've noticed that when I go onto that site now, that information is no longer available, and I'm pretty sure that's because of HIPAA arrangements and 
the fact that we can no longer share that kind of information. Um, here's a directory of health organizations that I think you might find useful. If someone comes to you and says, oh, I, I need information on Alzheimer's, we don't have anything current perhaps in our library, uh, you could go online here and find the national organization, which in turn could direct you to something local if you were interested in locating that. Um, and I'm including healthcare.gov here too because again, people have a lot of questions about what is covered in their state or what's happening with Medicare. This one happens to be put out by the government. It's called healthcare.gov. So this first arrow here, you would just pick your state, Nebraska, and then it would tell you what is covered there. So I found this interesting when I was exploring this a little bit further that if I clicked on that learn more about preventing and wellness, I got a list of 16 covered preventive services for adults. So you might find it interesting that blood pressure screening, for example, is covered, or um, depression screening, or um, I think there was one also here about um, an aspirin reg regimen too. Um, but you can see what is or is not uh, covered for you. Um, I do want to remind people just about a few things in terms of providing reference, and Terry will probably talk more to this. But we just want to remind folks that everyone has the right to access medical information in the library. Now we want to make sure that we're counseling folks on the limitations of the information that we can provide. We are not doctors. We are providing information to them or directing them to information so that they can take it to their doctor and discuss it with their doctor. And again, we hope that they're taking these reliable resources as opposed to printing off you know, a stack of papers that is two inches tall that all comes from Google. Um, always tell the patrons the source of the information. So again, if they need to share that with their physician, they can do so. And make sure that you're protecting the privacy of the patron uh, because that's very important. Um, I wanted to mention this additional resource that actually was a joint project that came out of the National Network Libraries of Medicine. It's a document that's uh, probably about 40 or 50 pages long. And you can print this out, and I've given you the website here. But it includes not just the websites that I mentioned, but it also includes um, these tips on uh, reference, how to conduct a reference interview as well. Now, um, as I mentioned, I'm based at the University of Nebraska Med Site, or Med Center and the McGugan Library of Medicine. And we have a um, tool, LibGuides, which we are each allowed to put up our own page for. So I created a uh, National Library of Medicine Databases and Resources page. You can see me circling this with my cursor here. I really created two sides of this. One, the left-hand side is National Library of Medicine Databases. And some of these are things that I have mentioned here today. But if you just click on this, then you can go directly to that website. So this is all hyperlinked. The other side that I created is National Library of Medicine K-12 through resources. So if you're working with a high school teacher, for example, this might be a good place to direct them as well. Uh, because we've got a lot of resources and, and we have a real initiative going right now about getting in touch with those folks so we can provide that information for them. Um, uh, I want to put in a couple of advertisements now. Uh, one is uh, that um, we do update things from time to time on the Library Broadband Builds Nebraska Communities blog. And so you'll see, for example, this one happens to be about the technology planning summer camp. Um, but Occasionally you'll see postings there from me. I also want to point out this yellow arrow is pointing to where you can see a calendar. So if there are trainings going on, um, this is what that page would look like. And you can get an idea of what's happening in our state across the entire state. Um, I do want to mention one other thing before I move on. As you know, most, most of you know, next week is our Nebraska Library Association uh, conference in conjunction with the school librarians and uh, the Mountain Plains Library Association. So I will be doing a presentation there which will include some of this information uh, because I've been doing a session on 
Teaching Medline Plus, and that will be on Thursday morning at 8 o'clock for you early risers. And I'll also be on a panel discussion for BTOP, the Broadband uh, Communities Project, and that will be Friday, I think, at 9 o'clock. So you can check your schedule to make sure, but just wanted to remind you of those. And again, if you have questions, don't hesitate to give me a call. I have an 800 number here, or you can reach me by uh, email as well. And now I'm going to turn it over to Terry Hartman, who will be telling you how to get health information with a personal touch. So I'm going to just change out our presentations here. Give me just a second. And it's all yours, Terry. Thanks very much. Um, as a member of a team that personally traveled over 2,500 miles across Nebraska in nine days, I know that Nebraska is not remote. No matter where you are in Nebraska, you have access to vital health information. Um, our Consumer Health Information Resource Service has been around since 1985, nearly 30 years, and that's thanks to a partnership between UNMC Library, the Nebraska Library Commission, and every one of the pu Nebraska public libraries. Hopefully you're familiar with the CHEERS program, which is letting you know that it's still kicking, still vital, and it still works to help you um, bring health, and health information into your communities. We have a website um, that you can get to. Uh, right away, we wanted to let you know we do take you to the Medline Plus website because there's no way that our library would be able to um, get, gather as much vital information that they have there as well as um, they've done. Uh, but for the service itself, we have the medical librarians here. Um, there's a team of uh, five medical librarians that work on the reference desk, led by Roxanne Cox, head of reference, and they will look up the information that you request. We did create this website, though, so that you would have some additional, maybe more Nebraska-focused resources. On the home page, we usually have features of the month, because most, uh, most of the months have a health flavor, and this changes. On the right-hand side, we have our consumer health disclaimer, which you should also have on your website, that it's talking about the information that we gather. Um, some, some material may contain information that's the opinion of the author, not necessarily that of the physician. It encourages all of our customers to go to their healthcare professional to get specific interpretation of the information that we give them. Um, we do get calls occasionally that somebody calls up at the reference desk and they say, I have a cough. And we say, well, we're the medical library. We can help you with that. Once you have a diagnosis, we'll help you. Um, Professor Cox has, uh, help, has instructions on how to handle reference uh, requests, similar to the information that Marty just mentioned as well. On the right-hand side, there's following the clues, the online video that was created in 2005. It was created to be timeless. Uh, take a look at it. It's short. It's in three languages, English, Spanish, and Sudanese Noor. It's ideal for children and uh, folks that may be new to the healthcare system in the United States on learning how to go to the doctor and then also go to the library for information. You may recognize the librarian in this video. It's Marty. You can request, uh, or your patrons can request themselves, the cheer, their cheers request. That we have a form, online form. You can email just ask us at UNMC, or we do have a toll-free number and a direct number that people can contact us. Um, they can go through your library. You can make the request for them. Sometimes the world is too small, and they don't want to discuss the the I, the specific condition with you. Um, nothing about that. People are allowed to have their privacy, so they can call us directly. Uh, but we we also serve uh, patrons through the library. We, treat us like you do your Ram McNally Atlas um, where your health information back room. This is a form. Hopefully you're able to see it, um, the CHEERS request form. All that needs to be done is uh, fill in all the boxes with the red asterisk, the names, the email, 
information and um, down below is describing their requests. This is the second part of the form. They don't necessarily have to fill this out, but it's useful for our searches. Uh, their gender, the age group, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, what they're interested in, if it's all information, uh, if they would like to know consumer information or consumer or professional information. If somebody's got a condition for several years or it's been in the family for a while, they may be considered something like a, an expert patient. And so they may want uh, professional level information that they can carry back to their professional. For cancer requests, uh, the specific type of cancer, the stage, and if it metastasized or spread, that's useful for us to be able to search the information. We use this information that's given on the form to go through our uh, medical library resources here um, and find the information. We will print it out and mail it, or now that most people have an email, we, we can uh, digitize it and email it to them. But we don't charge for this service. There's never been a fee for it. Um, it's all included with um, their call. You just call up and we'll mail it out or email it out. No fee. This again is an example of our consumer health disclaimer. If, you're, if you haven't set one up for your public library, you can get a hold of uh, Roxanne Cox here at the library and uh, get assistance with this. Um, you need to have something on there saying that your uh, information is given with the understanding that, that person will consult their health professional on specific medical questions. I come from the 80s as a librarian. Back then they said, okay, you, you can't touch medical, legal, or financial information. We could only point to it. We've come a long way with the health information, uh, but you still need to let them know there are limits to what we can do. Uh, we don't interpret, we share the information. A couple more of the tabs that on our website. The second tab is health information. Again, the link to Medline Plus. And we also have health and disease information sources here. Um, the top 10 health-related websites, uh, according to the Medical Library Association. And over on the right is, uh, and the additional resources, some of those that Marty talked about, the Medline Plus magazine and My Family Health Portrait. If you have, we've left the comment feature open on this page. If you find additional resources that you find very useful for your customers, please share them with us. Uh, folks that read these pages are the most polite I've ever worked with. Nobody lets us know if it's working out or not. So um, you can put the comment in there if you want us to take it off. You can say, please delete this comment after you read it. But that's an easy way to get to us. Or you can drop us a note at askus at unmc.edu and say, here's a resource that I think might be useful for your cheer site. Useful for your patrons as well as for your staff evaluating a website. We have some tips on here about what to think about when you're looking at any, qual any website's quality. This could be for used car sites or for health information. The source. Is there bias? Marty was mentioning the PDR earlier, that that's a bias towards the, co the companies that do the drugs. Um, that's useful information to know if you're only looking for the information that's ideal. But you need to know the bias of a resource the level of the reading, what's the intended audience, the references, if they are even there, and how current is the information, and the ease of use. All of those draw back to library science. We, we are all hands at this. But it is useful to share with your um, patrons so that they know how to evaluate a website when they're looking at it. We have a link to the Dr. Google's uh, story. And then there's some more information on evaluating health information from the Medline Plus. There's actually a section on that. And then um, there's an online tutorial about evaluating health information on the web by the National Library of Medicine. Under drug and supplement info, yes, we do take you to the drug information, the Medline Plus drug and supplement information. But there are a couple other ones that we have there directly linked. Um, one of the ones that we find pretty useful here at the reference desk at the Med Center is the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine. Uh, that, that gives a good place to go if somebody comes in. A uh, search that I heard um, referred earlier was herbal stem cell supplements. Um, that was a new term to us. And we found a little bit of information in there. Because if you just look it up on web, you usually find the companies that are selling it to you. Under find and contact a doctor, 
uh, we include the AMA Doctor Finder. We do include some of the UNMC and NMC, TNMC links. Um, however, our job is to find any doctor. So if you happen to call us, contact us, drop us a note, we can find specialists anywhere in the nation on uh, any condition that somebody's wanting treated. Um, I've looked up uh, physicians that ended up being on the East Coast, the West Coast, and the Mayo Clinic. Um, and I believe I've even looked up some in Germany. So let us know if there's a specific condition that somebody's needing a specialist for. We have additional resources that we couldn't link here that are on our shelves and we can look through them. We do have a link to clinical trials. In addition to UNMC trials, the clinicaltrials.gov. Um, for folks that are going through treatment and they would like to know a different level, maybe things haven't worked out or they have worked out or they just want to keep track of what's going on on their chronic condition, uh, this is a great place for them to be able to look up the information and then carry it to their healthcare professional and say, would this apply to me? I remember a long time ago I helped somebody um, that had a, an inborn uh, likelihood to have meningitis. It was twin sisters. All they had to do was send in their blood. They didn't have to physically go. There was a clinical trial going on on that. So it could be that there could be something going on that they wouldn't physically have to go someplace else, but it's something on their chronic condition that uh, they'd be able to find information on. We do have information for the underinsured and uninsured. We do include the healthcare.gov page, but also some local information towards uh, with a Nebraska focus. Um, if somebody's looking up information on that, we can help you uh, identify resources or people at the state level to be able to identify local clinics. Uh, we do have the pre-existing condition insurance plan here in, I believe this is in Nebraska, but this may be nationwide, and then Nebraska Medicaid and the immunization program are linked there. For librarians, um, BTOP promotional items that we carried out with us are here on the left-hand side. We also have the training materials on the right-hand side. Remember, for your VTOP training, all these resources we're showing you, they would probably qualify, and Krista would be able to tell us um, more if these would qualify for your training needs. Hopefully, you're counting today as your training. The Finding Health and Wellness at the Library, that resource that Marty showed, we did put, include a link directly to that, so you can get right to it and print it. On the left-hand side, um, ordering Cheers promotional items. Uh, you can request the tabletop display for free. We also have brochures and cards. Just drop us a note. If you have something going on that you'd like to market, the access to health information that your com community has through your library, because we are through your library, you are offering this. If it wasn't for you, they wouldn't have it. Um, please let us know if we can send this out to you. It's uh, free. It's about 18 inches tall. It's not as big as what this picture, I should have stood in this picture so, so it would show you how small it was. Um, you can check it out. We mail it to you free. You mail it back free. Again, additional training. We have a training tab. All of these tours, uh, tutorials, the print materials, uh, video tutorial on the Medline Plus, evaluating health information, it's excellent sources of training for your staff and customers. We do have a Spanish member of our team, Spanish language member, who is going through and translating material, uh, translating links. And uh, so far we have the ones on the left, the consumer health resources in Spanish. Let us know if there's um, specifically something you're looking for, but additional resources will be adding to this as we go along throughout the final year of BTOP. You can always contact us for more information. The email is the, e is the best way. Ask us at unfc.edu. You can call us toll free. Um, your library, through the access to health information on your VTOP computers, as well as direct search expertise through the medical librarians here, improves the well-being of your community. It's an honor for us to serve you as your health information experts, and we stand ready to support your future training events and staff training. If you're going to conduct any training for your community, which we really hope you are, um, we, we get out to you about once every five years, it seems like. Uh, we're, we're right there for you. We look forward to seeing you at our booth at MLA next week. 
And um, however we can help you out, please let us know. Thanks for all you do. Okay. Thank you, Marty and Terry. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments or anything? Um, you can type into the questions section of the GoToWebinar interface, and I can um, we can read that and pass it along. Um, nobody had any questions during your presentation, guys. So um, I, I obviously you're telling them everything they ever wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, and we should and, mention that you're going to post these presentations uh, yes. with the archive recording, mm -hmm. right? Yes, the recording. I've got the pres. I took the, the actually what I did is I took the two powerpoints that you guys had and just put them into one, um, just oh. as one document. Um, it's gonna. It's already up on our SlideShare page for the commission. Um, this pa this session has been recorded, so it will be posted as well with our archives and all of the URLs that are in the powerpoints. I pulled them and put them into the commission's delicious account as well, so those oh. will all be available when the recording is ready too. Yep. Okay. Um, and that'll be available for anyone to watch. And um, as I think. Um, Terry, you mentioned about training hours. Yes, this session for any BTOP library is definitely report it as for training, whether you watch it in person or recorded. <laughs> um, were there other sessions that you were wondering if we're able to get tr um, their training hours from, or were you just talking about this one, Terry? Uh, we list training uh, training sites on the Cheers page. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Yes, those would be um, things they'd want to uh, submit as well. For BTAP libraries, you're submitting your training hours to Angela, I, we hope, monthly. Um, and they, those would definitely be things that you'd want to include with the number of hours that your staff has um, done training. Um, we don't have any questions. We do have a very informative and useful thank you uh, comment on the question section for you guys. Um, okay. Yeah, I was I was actually liking I, I've actually noted down from for myself that family health portrait um, website that, uh -huh. that you said the. Um, Surgeon General does. That is great. I, I know that I, um, when I've first gone to my doctors trying to remember everything that everyone had as a possible disease in my history, his family was, I think I did okay, but I'm sure I missed something. Um, but that's okay. a great res resource to use. And that's it reminds mm -hmm. oh, We're actually doing that as a wedding gift for one of our uh, newly, our oh. folks that are engaged. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. they don't know. Yeah. Right, yeah. And it reminded me of those genealogy sites. I have in our family, we yeah. use um, the genie.com site, and all of us can log in and add information of just your family history. So we've got yeah. various people go in and add, oh, don't forget this person, and oh, those so-and-so is married to so-and-so. This would be, yeah, I'm going to you know, go in and start using it and try and share it with my mom and my you know, aunts and uncles and whatnot to see if we can you know, get a better picture of things. Excellent. Um, yeah, uh, we do have one question. That is there a way to link the UNMC site to our web page? Our being the Crete Public Library. It's Carol Aiden asking about that. It's up on um, the screen. Yeah, you can just use that link right there and put it anywhere on your website that you want to and link out to them. Absolutely. That would be um, wonderful. We yeah, have you, uh, health, uh, human resource places that have put us up on there on their company page. Mm -hmm. um, this is available to all Nebraskans. No other state does it. So, mm -hmm. yes, please. That's right. I remember you mentioned that at one of our summer camps that there were some before, but there aren't anymore, it seems, that they've all kind of... No. This is it. We're the, last, we're the only one out there, yeah. That's a great resource, yeah. And I was also very happy to hear about the, the Cheers Forum that I know we have a lot of libraries who are in our BTOP program, and just in the state, who are very small in very small towns where everybody knows everyone, and having that form on the Cheers site where they can just send the, their medical question to you guys instead of talking to the local people, I think that's a great thing for them. Right, and we do have some people who just go home and call us. Call oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, because I don't personally like forms. Yeah. <laughs> 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 if you want to talk to an actual person, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay, well, it doesn't look like anything else has come in while we were chatting, so that's fine. Um, so the session has been recorded, as I said, and it will be available, I'll say, later today. <laughs> I'll get it up and going. Um, so I think I'll just, I'm going to wrap it up for today. I'm going to take back uh, control here. Okay. Um, and just show my screen. So thank you very much, uh, Mar Marty and Terry. This is great. Um, as you said, you have been going around the state and doing these sessions, but we we have well, in just 
we have 270 some odd public libraries in the state and 140 of them are in the grant. Obviously not everybody can attend everything that we do. So I think this is great that we've got this now recorded here so that um, people who can't make it to the in-person sessions can go and, and get the same information from here. So thank you very much for uh, our pleasure being here with us. And um, I want to, uh, well, next week we do not have an Encompass Live. I was going to invite people to come next week. <laughs> next week is, as Marty mentioned, the um, MPLA, NLA, and SLA annual conference. So we also go on hiatus. That's the one week of the year that we do not do Encompass Live because we, our staff, and of course librarians across the state are heading, in this case, up to La Vista for the annual state uh, library conference. So there will be no Encompass Live next week, but the week after that we will have the third part um, third in the series that uh, about your government online that Laura Johnson has been doing here. This is the third and last one, and it'll be about independent federal government agencies. So hopefully you will uh, register for that one and come and see that session. And we are on Facebook and Compass Live. So if you would like to have announcements and notifications of when we are doing things, please uh, like us on Facebook, and you will get all of the announcements as you can see here. Join us right now for this morning's one. I announced about a little over an hour ago to let people remind people that we were going to be doing the show. So like us on Facebook and you'll get our notifications there. So thank you very much, Marty, Terry, and everyone who was attending this morning. And we will see you in two weeks on the next Encompass Live. Sounds good. Thanks, Krista. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now.